I think the thing that made me most want to be part of Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3D is that I have been a fan of this movie as long as I can remember. I think Leatherface is unique in the pantheon of horror icons. He's, he's been trained from childhood to perform a particular killing function. He's afraid of the world. He grew up with a family of people who all did his thinking for him. He was, he was an instrument. He, and, and, and he felt that way. He had, no, he had no identity other than what his job was to do. And then that was all taken away from him. His, his circumstances changed completely. When it comes to choosing Leatherface, um, there's a few decisions that you have to make. One is you want a big imposing guy and Dan Yeager's 6'6". I didn't want a cliche like a physically fit wrestler or a uh, football player. You can't imagine how many hundreds of those guys were submitted. Dan's got a bit of a belly and so did the original Leatherface. It makes it feel real. Most people have bellies. I, I know I do. He was seen at a Christmas party looking like Leatherface and I just couldn't believe it. Just I looked at him, I took one look at this guy, he was six foot six, he was standing there kind of gazing at the party, million mile stare, face built of just granite, forehead that looked like something that maybe Frankenstein wished for, and uh, I said, this guy's it. Because you're wearing a mask, there's only a few ways for you to express yourself as an actor, and they are through your physicalness of walking and moving, but the most important thing are the eyes. Because eyes are the windows into the soul and also into the madness of this person. And Dan has frightening eyes. He's got a big brow. He can intimidate anybody around him if he chooses to by a simple look. And that's how he won the part. It was, it was simply what he could say without speaking a word. I prepared for this role actually uh, mostly focusing on the work that Gunnar Hansen had already done. Uh, I, I, I ripped him off unashamedly in in continuing that character that he created um, that 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 was my main influence the biggest challenge in playing this role was overcoming the in intimidation I think of of taking on what has become this iconic character it's 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 a little daunting to to assume you know the role that that someone else who, who who I admired all my life you know had had done so well if you'd have told me two years ago I was going to be standing here in front of you meeting you as as another leather face I, I would have said you are you know no no way uh, life life is is incredible and this is one of those pivotal incredible moments for me. I, I, I can't tell you how, how, I don't know, I'm gonna get emotional on you. <laughs> sorry. I don't do that. Yeah, no, it's not sorry. Oh, shucks. Yeah, crying Leatherface, that's, that's yeah, no. not. It's good. an ugly thought. Yeah, yeah. Leatherface expresses himself in the mask. Yeah. And that's what gave me the idea that, uh, when I played him, that he, um, there's nothing under the mask. My whole concept was there just isn't there. You take the mask off, there's no face. Yeah. And uh, uh, it worked for me to do it that way. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, it made him seem mysterious and, mm -hmm. you know, sort of really creepy. It was quite an experience to meet this man that I have idolized all my life. That, that has never happened to me before. That he is really the first of, of who I classify as my idols in this world. And we actually discussed a little bit about, about playing the character and, and the differences in the two characters because by the time I get him, he's a vastly different person. It's, it's no more, he's no more just an instrument of someone else's will. He is out for vengeance. Action. So my first shot in Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3D was carrying the corpse of my grandmother down the mansion steps. My grandmother, of course, is played by Marilyn Burns, the original Sally. And I cannot tell you how thrilled I was and how difficult it was to remain calm carrying Marilyn Burns dead in my arms. Wonderful. Welcome back to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre.
chainsaw, Marilyn Burns. The, the, the other strange thing about uh, this role I didn't expect is Leatherface has a, uh, an awkward walk because it, in, in like the final scenes of the original movie, he injured his right leg. And he's been living in a basement for 20 years, and, and, and so I kind of imagined his physicality somewhat compromised. But anyway, he, he walks with his, his, his right foot kind of out sideways, and it drags a little bit. You do that for 14 hours. And it really just uh, um, takes a toll on the on on the uh, the groin muscles for like. <laughs> and I was not prepared for the actual post, you know, work pain of, of that. Just, just, just say, hit that bitch, Leatherface. Hit that bitch, Leatherface. Just somebody be off camera saying that. Yeah. All right. Action. I've, I've had a different reaction to it than I would have expected of myself. The, the screaming of a woman. When you're chasing her with a chainsaw, it just makes you want to kill her more. Which surprised me. I didn't, I didn't expect that. He's coming! Yeah, doing this, it's, it's, it's changed things. I can only take it in small doses. Yeah, you can't live with a character like this. It's, it's too, too dark. It really is. Welcome to the world of Leatherface. When we arrived here, John, the director, had a, a, a vision, a specific vision about how he wanted the masks to look. So he had a couple of ideas about things and some of the things that he really liked was uh, that they look uh, crispy and tanned and leathery. We're doing this film now 37 years later and a lot of the things that we're doing are, are similar to what they did back then, but obviously there's been a lot of advances. What we've done differently now is now it's molded to the actor's face. So it's actually molded to fit Dan perfectly. You can get more expression through it. Um, and the other mask, uh, it's very stiff. And with this one, uh, you can sort of read his character through it a little bit more. He, he can get a little bit more acting going on. It's not practical to be a, a murderous monster when you're on a movie set. And the, the mask is a wonderful shortcut to that character. When, you cannot help but be a murderous monster in that mask. There's a moment in this movie when he's changing his masks. He rips the old one off and you realize it's been stitched on. And then he takes the thread and sews the next mask onto his face. And I thought, why didn't we think of that? It's a brilliant thing to expand the character of Leatherface a little bit to get a better sense of him. We made a total of three masks for this film. One was described to us as his favorite pair of slippers, so to speak. What he wears around the house, the one he has all the time. And then uh, we have what's called the slaughterhouse mask. It's more distorted. It's more, almost more horrifying and, and even uh, paler. On this one in particular, it has uh, like granules of salt that we sort of kind of glued into it. They like the idea of having some hair that would just be punched in to sort of catch some of the light. We put all these leather straps in just really to make it look cool, like it would be something Leatherface might do. But when we pull it on them on the back, we sort of tighten them down because it tends to get a little loose and, and sort of rides funny. So we just sort of tighten it like a boot, which is something that Lionsgate had said that they would like. Yeah, when we designed the mask originally, that's the first thing we had in mind is how to make it easier to go on and off. Yeah. That way he, it won't take that long to take it off in between takes and he doesn't have to wear it for a long period of time. And I think he's grateful for that. And the mask is, is not a comfortable thing to wear by any means. It's, it's just like wrapping your head in, in, in latex in 105 degree heat. You sweat a lot, it's uncomfortable. It, you know, it, it overheats your head. 
These are Dan's teeth. We cast Dan's teeth just like if you went to the dentist and then uh, did a little pull off of them. Did some sculptures of uh, really nasty uh, hillbilly sort of, I don't go to the dentist too often teeth. And for the bottoms, we just sort of paint them with uh, a nicotine and a brown and a black to give it this same sort of feel. That way he doesn't have to have a full set of dentures in his mouth. This is young Leatherface. At the beginning of the movie? Yeah. Right. He's uh, being scolded by Drayton, so yep. yeah, he's carried in his brother, which is why he's all bloody. This one is this one is my favorite. It's in a replica of the one from 1974. So you know, there's a scene in that one that was actually cut out of the original film where he puts makeup on the mask, and it's really disturbing. And then you see him later with the makeup on the mask, and it's not really explained. But when you see the deleted scenes and you get the whole picture, then it it sort of comes about. So, but this, it's, it's really freakish. And when you see his eyes in there, because it has like the eyelashes and everything, it's just, it's a really, really gruesome, freaky image. My name is Mark Wallace, I'm the property master. Welcome to the prop truck. Uh, you know, I think the main challenge obviously is the chainsaw, which is what this movie is all about. This is one of our rubbers. But as you can see, if you were to have the real one next to this, it's uh, pretty damn close. And, and we use the rubbers obviously for rehearsals and blocking. There's no reason to have the real chainsaw there. Effects can rig a smoke thing to this. They can put the sound in post and we can have him running over tree stumps and this and that with a safe chainsaw, not a real one, so the actor won't trip, accidentally fall on the chainsaw or what have you. You know, we try to take all the safety precautions we can. This is the one that the movie begins with. This is uh, based off a of Husqvarna chainsaw. This is the one with the two foot blade. This is the first one that we see him with. He ends up losing it in a, in a chase with our actress, Alexandra Daddario and uh, the police confiscate it as evidence and he goes back to his lair of his wall of chainsaws and picks out his, his next favorite. This is an uh, interesting chainsaw because this matches the chainsaw from the original 1974 film. It's not the exact one, but it's an exact match. Now in there, the uh, font on here is a little different and if a real film buff knows, they put a little black stripe over Poulin, which was in the center. But this is the same chainsaw, the same model. Uh, no Texas Chainsaw Massacre film is complete without implements of destruction. And uh, here we have some of the, those implements. Uh, and uh, most of these are rubbers, but there's one reel that goes with each item. Closest, so you can feel the weight of this one. But as you can see, these are lighter weight. This is a real meat tenderizer. Of course, you can see the rubbers are, you know, actor friendly. So doing props, you really are there all the time. You really are hands on. Uh, you really are a part of that collaboration. What kind of movie are we making? That guy's an animal. I, I still cannot put into words yeah, they're, they're, they're what it means to be standing next to this man as Leatherface. It, it's, uh, w words are not going to cover this. It's, this, is, this is so incredible. I only hope and pray that I've done justice to what you've created well, and I'm, what I've admired all my life. I would like to add that he's wearing high heel boots and I'm not. <laughs> And I'm standing down slow. Yeah, yes. <laughs> A great honor. Thank you.